Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for this episode of This Argo Life, brought to you by the UWF Voyager. Today we have Grant Bridges interviewing local Pensacola music duo twice a week. Take it away, Grant. You can just say phenomenal. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, you're certainly not the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we've been introduced, this is our first episode. We've got twice a week here in the studio. Uh, we're trying to learn more about local musicians. Uh, we're trying to figure out, you know, kind of like what kind of music scene Pensacola has. A lot of people new to the area, uh, it's really hard to get into. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're kind of trying to do with this first week. We're trying to get local bands to come on, talk to us, tell us what makes us different, you know, and kind of shed some light on our actual, we do have a music scene here. And that's, so that's what we're trying to talk about. So please introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Nick Pooley. Um, I'm one of the two members of Twice a Week. I'm in charge of the producing. I play keys and I play guitar. I'm Jace Mungai. I'm from Portland, Oregon originally. I am the vocalist and a drummer. Uh, we met about five years ago, lifeguarding on the beach actually, with Grant as well. Uh, we've been making music ever since. Yeah, so that music, you know, it, it is one thing. Uh, when I listen to it, it, it is completely different than anything else you're going to hear from around here. And the fact that it's original is huge. Uh, as you as we'll play in the clip, uh, I'm the, that hits you up front, right? Is that you guys have a completely original sound? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and so what kind of like what kind of inspires you? What's the process for making your music? So for me, we always start with a, a beat, you know, and usually our our beats and our music start with uh, a piano riff, actually. So we usually most of the time we'll start with a piano riff couple chord progressions or something like that and then we'll build off of that so you know next will come drums and a lot of kind of what I've been trying to do with my music is in my opinion rock and roll is kind of the same culturally as what hip-hop is today right and so I feel like those two kind of go together pretty well um, you know maybe not super directly but inadvertently mm -hmm. if you could find a way to mix those two things you know I think you can really be onto something there and so that's kind of where I try to go and the direction I try to take with our music and try to give it kind of a, you know, dress it up in like a poppy vibe so everyone can enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that too. Is like that the counterculture on both of those kind of like they mesh in a way. I think that a lot of people don't right. tap into. A lot of our even our most hardcore hip hop songs, you'll hear an electric guitar in it mm -hmm. or like a you know a heavy crash on a cymbal and it's not all trap drums and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that sets you guys apart, and that's exactly right. what I was saying. And so I do, I do really appreciate that kind of sound. And so, uh, going off of that, what's your favorite? What's your guys' favorite song? I mean, I'm sure you guys will have different answers, but what's your oh, favorite man. song you've made so far? Like, what's the one where you're like, I, yeah, this is the one, dude. <laughs> as far as the ones that are like out on Spotify, and I don't necessarily think this is the song that will like blow up or anything, but I really like Swimming Through. Mm -hmm. I just because. You know, that's a song that's out and people can go listen to. So I like that one a lot. I agree with that heavily. Um, the problem with that being our favorite song and one of the first as far as a blowing up song goes is it, it's not repetitive. Mm -hmm. And until you have an established fan base and stuff, so where you, I can really do my, my lyrical acrobatics and stuff, like people aren't listening to the words as much as just like the body of art. Like, could I, pa could I party to this or right. whatever. So... We want to stay true to ourselves always, you know, we're always going to have that different sound, mm -hmm. but we are working on doing a little more repetitive stuff to kind of, people can, you know, after they listen to it twice, they know half the words or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one thing I wanted to add to when we start a beat, we usually with a piano okay. rift, um, it's also the mood setter when we start that, mm -hmm. you know, like which way the song's going to go, like how the chord progression is, is this going to be super hype, is this going to be in depth and substantial lyrics, or... Yeah. You know. Right, I've noticed that. What's the song with the piano intro? It's like in your top three most played right now. It's got like a heavy piano intro. It's so it, Okay, yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> that, that is the song. <laughs> dun, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that, yeah, because that, that song, exactly what you said, does set the pace, and so you kind of know what you're getting into right yeah. Right. That song yeah. actually was made... Uh, I'm pretty sure I was at Jason. We had a recording studio. It was in his bedroom at the time at one of his other houses. Yeah. And I was in there, and I, I didn't really know what I wanted to make on that day. And so our friend Jake was over with us, and he's like, "Who hey, Nick make a sick piano beat?" 
And so that's where actually where that came from. Yeah. In the file. We sat on it for like a year. Yeah. Before we did words. And the it. file was saved as sick piano. Though it was saved as Hey Nick, make a sick piano beat. That's how the <laughs> file was saved. <laughs> so that's how we, we do that a lot. It. it makes it hard to find stuff sometimes. But, yeah. Because you yeah. just sort of bullsh- you're just yeah. so you can't curse. You're just you know doing what you want. You're just right. and crapping it. And yeah. so, I, I I actually had that thought. And one of the questions I wanted to ask was like. Why or how, like what? What is the reasoning of like? I've noticed that you guys have been making music for a while, but mm-hmm. Spotify. You've only been putting Spotify on for like the last year. You only put music on Spotify for the last year. Right. So, what's the thought process of how you guys are releasing your music and coming out with it? Uh, so we've been moving a lot lately. We just moved into a, like a permanent house, mm-hmm. and so you know stuff's going to be coming soon. But you know we've been do- having a lot of transition, mm-hmm. and then as well as. We're really bad, especially me. I'm bad about not, I'll not I won't put anything out unless I think it's absolutely perfect and absolutely like ready to go out. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of a big issue with me individually. Like I I have to make sure it's perfect. And with music, it doesn't always have to be exactly perfect. But you know I I just want to try my best to make sure it's as good as it can possibly be. Right. And you know the message that that song is going to send is there not only in the lyrics but it's also there in the chords and in the notes you know yeah it's a good problem to have. also what we've learned is like we want to give our pieces of art like a fair chance so mm-hmm. just yeah vomiting songs onto spotify or whatever like that's not going to help us as far as getting views and stuff so we're really working on coupling music with visuals mm-hmm. and stuff like that really putting money into marketing right um and not just because this is something that we really want to do and like it'd be the only thing that we do mm-hmm. right um so yeah. you got to like cultivate it and right yeah. right yeah you, the brand like management is important i mean how but, dope is it when a you know an artist releases a song like a single for the first time and it already has a video shot mm-hmm. like it's mm-hmm. you love that and it helps to see that yeah, yeah exactly yeah exactly it's, especially if it's like a surprise single and you come on yeah they have a <laughs> right. music video yeah and that's that's huge mm-hmm. and so I've, i have noticed that with you guys and i i i you guys have played live in a few different places now, right? Mm-hmm. So Seville and then Miami yeah, as right. well. So that's cool. So what's some of the best and worst experiences you've had playing live? <laughs> <laughs> so Miami, it was in Coral Gables. It was actually a showcase tour. I don't know if you've heard that. I honestly hate marketing for them right now. But uh, <laughs> it was just like we decided the day before uh, that we were going to do this, and it was just uh, what, a five-minute slot or... 10 minutes slot or something. Slot. So we just had, to, we actually had to finish a song because we didn't have a lot of music at that time. Mm-hmm. The night before, then we drove to Miami, which is like over 10 hours. Yeah. Realized that flights down there were only $80 there and back. So oh. that would have been great. But it turned out <laughs> that was the only time we had to practice, like rehearse, was in the car ride. So it actually went you guys really were well. just hyping yourself up. Right, yeah. We literally, for 10 hours, we're just doing yeah, these we four were... songs over and over and over again. We rehearsed in the um, car. But it went there. really well, man. It was awesome feedback uh the show at seville and we you know it went pretty well um we had technical difficulties up to the second before we started mm-hmm. i mean we thought we're oh. like, if we didn't have that sound guy with us we yeah so true. so we go to play at seville right and we're supposed to play in the infinity fogs the big room <laughs> so we're in there we're freaking out setting stuff up and we're like okay thank god like we're starting to figure everything out like sounding good and then right when we start feeling like everything's good the owner or the manager comes in and he's like, hey, like, I'm sorry, guys, there, there was a hurricane going on or like that tropical storm. Yeah. And he's like, we're going to have to close this place. It's not going to be very packed. So we're going to have to move you guys to the complete other end of Seville at a different room. Mm-hmm. So we had to like undo all of our audio stuff, go back over there, set it up. But and everything went as good as it possibly could have gone because right. literally up until the second we stepped on stage, we couldn't figure out how to get our vocals to come through the sound system. No, oh, that's terrifying. Or, yeah, we couldn't figure it out how to do insane. it. Yeah, so we are like, mm-hmm. like, what are we going to do? Like, we're just going to have to jam live the whole time. And ended up, everything started coming through perfect, and the show went really, really well. Would you guys ever play at Seville again? If oh, you could? oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're going to. We've been talking with them. And, uh, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, uh, it, because playing in that, that big room would be huge, I imagine. Right, like, yeah, on a the, college night or something. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what we need. Sure. And you guys, uh, like, uh, from what I understand, you guys pulled in a lot of people. I mean, pe- especially people that don't usually listen to you. You mm-hmm. know, I feel like Seville, is, especially because you guys had that tropical storm that same night. Yeah. Uh, the fact that there was anyone there. Yeah. It was yeah. like, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was expecting, like, maybe 10 You guys people, must sure. like yeah. us. This is cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah so, and so, I mean, wrapping up now, um, I got a few more questions for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, one... 
uh, what's the future of Twice Week? What do you guys have planned for 2020 uh, and then coming up? Yeah, we got we got big things planned. So we just started setting up our new studio, and that's about 80% set up. Mm -hmm. And so all we got to do now is just a couple cosmetic things, but mm -hmm. all the audio equipment's ready to go. So this upgraded past, everything. Yeah, these past couple weeks we've been you know grinding away. Um, more social media posts. You know, we're going to be posting at least once a day. Oh, cool. Just so people can know what we're doing. Um, Retrograde, that's the name of our new album coming out. Mm -hmm. That's going to be coming out, I would say, probably within two months. Okay. we got to take some time to market it and, you know, let people know it's coming out, build mm -hmm. a little bit of an audience before we release it so that right. it has some pretty decent numbers when it comes out. Um, also then, shoot videos. Yeah. Yeah, so that's those are the main things right now, you know, social media, building our audience, and working on that album, making sure that album is refined and ready to go. Yeah. Yeah, this house I had actually bought, so we're, we're there, we're not moving every year and changing oh, studios, sick. and mm -hmm. um, it's a two-car garage, we carpeted it all out, sealed the door, insulated it, and mm -hmm. it's amazing. Man. So also it's also probably going to be a space. great hangout spot. Too. Yeah, we just yeah. got two couches in there. And oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that cool. is fantastic. It's awesome. You just need like a ping pong table or something. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, so finally, and the most important question I've been waiting all time to ask: uh, If you had to eat a food twice a week for the rest of your life, what food would you pick and why? Uh, fajita quesadilla. Ooh, so, that's uh, that sounds delicious. Protein, veggies, carbs, and everything you need. Dang. Uh, yeah. Probably cheeseburger, fries, and shit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the tree. You already eat that twice. I already do. <laughs> <laughs> I also eat Mariachi Spice Week. All right. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, any closing words? Anything you want to say? Anything you want to promote? Well, uh, thanks for having us on. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's an honor to be, you know, the first podcast mm -hmm. of this, you know, this this channel, mm -hmm. this section. Um, yeah. You know, Retrograde's the name of the album's coming out. If you haven't checked our music out, we've got five songs out on Spotify. Uh, we're twice a week, two eyes, no spaces. If you want to check us out, we're on Instagram as well. You got anything? Yeah, we're going to be super active. Um, we got ourselves on a new schedule. We're posting every single night, sometimes twice a day. Um, and yeah, follow us on Instagram, please. Won't, won't be sorry. <laughs> cool. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Man. Cool. Cuts. local music duo twice a week. Coming up, we have guitarist and Pensacola YouTuber Eric Post, followed by Ben Lofton and the family. Stay tuned for more. In an interview uh, for our first episode of Argo Life, we have Eric Postman. Uh, he is a local guitarist. He has a YouTube channel, uploads semi-regularly, uh, and is trying to kind of find his way, I guess, in the local music industry. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, I am. We're, we're trying to learn more about local musicians, so that's why you're on here. Try to shed some light on what's it like making music in Pensacola. How's your experience been? What made you want to get into it? So, our, my first question is, you know, like, tell tell me about yourself. What do you? What what is, what is about music brings you into it? What do you What do you play? What do you? What's about it? So, uh, play guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been playing for quite a while now, like uh, going on 12 years or something like that. Right. Um, always been a big fan. My dad played classical guitar and so like, you know, kind of started closer to that end and then ended up in like sh shred territory, uh, which is what I'm into now. Really, I'm into everything, but, but you know, to improve, I'm trying to stick to like some difficult, you know, tricky stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I played... Uh, a few different gigs mm -hmm. around town, did like a bunch of different styles and stuff. Uh, I guess one thing I can tell you is that uh, bass is easier. <laughs> oh yeah. In, in, in town. Like, I play if you guitar do heroes. I, I realize that the bass is like the yellow and green notes. That's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know. <laughs> well, everybody everybody wants to play guitar. Right. That's like, you know, everybody wants to be like Eddie Van Halen or mm -hmm. like, you know, some and John Mayer. The bassist is like the kicker. The bassist is like the kicker, right? <laughs> so, but you, you know, don't know you need them until you need them. Exactly. Because, <laughs> you know, if, if you play bass... You know, everybody's out there trying to get their gig as their, you know, you know, I play guitar and sing or whatever. And you're like, well, I play, if you if you play bass, they're like, yeah, I can get in here, we'll pay you. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to look for, you know, that steady work, bass is the way to go. But so uh, you did that for a while. Uh, a little bit of yeah. sitting in on bass. Uh, tried to do the best I could on guitar. Uh, got some studio work uh, oh, cool. at some point uh, with uh, uh, 
Fabio, Fabio. I don't know if you know Fabio. Mm-hmm. He's a local dude. I gotta look up uh, his uh, what his studio is called. But he runs a home studio and he records a lot of stuff. Uh, he's mostly like you know rap and uh, kind of hip hop stuff. Uh, but you know he needed a guitar on stuff, and so I've been in to his studio, you know, quite a few times just recording stuff on miscellaneous projects. But, uh, so you, you, you say you play guitar, you know, you played bass for a little bit. What's some of the things that, what's some of the bands that inspire you that have made you want to play, like, that made you want to play guitar? You know, uh, your dad, obviously. Yeah. And then, like, with some musicians, you're like, uh, that you kind of are inspired to kind of be like, that you take inspiration from. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be a little cliche here and say Jimi Hendrix, mm-hmm. uh, ACDC mm-hmm. were the two of the first ones. Uh, I remember being a little kid and I went to, uh, to the public library in Gulf Breeze there and got a Jimi Hendrix CD and I put it on for the first time and seriously it was, it was <laughs> like, like it blew my mind yeah. and I was like I, I have to get an electric guitar that's what like set me off you know because before that it was like yeah okay I strummed some chords I played some uh, Chuck Berry some Johnny B. Good mm-hmm. you know three, three chords really easy it's funny because I had a similar experience with that except I am not musically inclined, but I remember clearly, it was like fourth grade, fifth grade, and we were learning about like different ways people played the national anthem. And mm-hmm. my teacher plays the Jimi Hendrix national anthem, and I was like, this guy's fantastic. Yeah. Like, this guy's am-. Like my fifth grade me is like, oh, it may- all makes sense now. Like, you yeah. know, like a moment of clarity. Yeah, plus you see, you see him up there on stage, and he's just like this godlike <laughs> figure, like, I want to. I want to do that. Like, that was. Side that me was up. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So that made you so, want to definitely like start playing yeah. it more seriously. Yeah, I cool. think more. I mean, more so hearing it than than seeing it because mm-hmm. I just had the CD and I was just like, I, I want to make that sound. I want to sound like that. Cool. Uh, but yeah, so I guess more modern stuff now. There's uh, some uh, really cool progressive metal mm-hmm. bands that are. Uh, experimenting with like you know different time signatures and like really like heavy unique riffs like like visionary level melodies and stuff like that that are what's just uh, like what's like one of those bands that would uh, uh, be like that I think Pliny is a really good one mm. um, he's an Australian dude uh, okay. and he has he plays instrumental guitar um, but it's I'd say it's more so like taking the tools from all of the metal and and all of these different genres and just like making like this amazing soundscape mm-hmm. of uh yeah i don't know just this beautiful music that that i think is approachable by like most anyone because it's just like you can tell he's just like a, a composer you know uh, there's one band super weird band and i don't know if you would classify them as technically uh metal but they they remind me of some of the things you're saying have you ever heard it's fun to say too. That's the best part. Have you ever heard of King Gizzard and the Lizard uh, Wizards? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've seen those guys. Dude, you've seen them live? I have not seen okay. them live. I've but, seen them on YouTube. And something. they're they're but, fantastic, right? Yeah, like wow. they 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 definitely do a lot of those things you're saying, where they're taking kind of the past and they're make they're revolutionizing it. You know, yeah. they're making it different and kind of more approachable, I think, to a lot of the right. people listening to it now. I think very very like Eastern influences, right? Microtonal stuff. Because mm-hmm. you know we have like uh, even uh, tempered. Scales, we twelve notes, right? Mm-hmm. They, they. I think they're using like microtonal, weird tuned guitars where it's like, not really. Something that like a Western ear, is like comfortable with, but they like yeah. have kind of, jazzed it up or something. My favorite part about their lyrics, I listened to like four of their songs about realizing they're like an environmental band too. Oh, are they? <laughs> yeah, That's they're cool. like they're talking about how you can't go to Mars because all the rich are gonna go there and like the the Earth is for the poor and like while they're screaming it over metal tracks and it's like <laughs> this is fantastic. This is actually the best band I've listened to this year or I guess twenty nineteen. Uh, so that's funny that you know them. I'm really yeah. stoked that you yeah. know about them. But so now that we got the inspirations out of the way, um, with your own music, what's kind of the vision for your own music? What's kind of the plan? Um, what do you what do you and uh, like what do you kind of plan for yourself as a musician? You know, is it something you want to do? Is it more of a hobby? Is it you know your YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. Like you said, you mentioned your YouTube channel, um, and you do a wide variety of content on your YouTube channel. So, what do you kind of have planned for that too? Uh, yeah. So that's a lot of a lot of stuff yeah, to cover. Sorry, but sorry. but uh, but yeah, I'd say personally for like my own musical development uh, mm-hmm. is getting into like more complicated stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Working on my picking hand, uh, working on like 
you know, speed, accuracy, all that stuff, and, and trying to, like, dive deeper into music theory and, like, composition and starting to, like, write some instrumental right. stuff. Um, of course, if I, if, if there were people to play with, you know, that had some, like, interesting material, like, I'd jump on that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, so, like, just f making new music would be fun, or that, you know, I have stuff, I record so much stuff and then it gets put on the back burner but so maybe revisiting some old music and spicing it up and maybe I'll release something um, on the YouTube side you know really that's just an extension of like my passion for like the instrument and and the hobby and everything mm -hmm. uh, yeah so, so that ends up being like whatever I mean it can be covers it can be gear reviews it can be uh, you know whatever like just goofy ideas I have. Sometimes there's I have one uh, fun idea that I'm hopefully gonna get into uh, soon. Mm -hmm. So we'll, it's a secret for now, but <laughs> but you'll have to see it. It's coming when on it comes the out. Yeah, yeah, you're thinking about it though, yeah. and that's gonna come out on your YouTube video. Yeah, on YouTube that'll come out on YouTube. Okay, cool. And so, so what's the name of your YouTube channel? So it's just Eric Post. Okay. It's just my name. Oh. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's uh, there's me and there's a dude who sells real estate. So like. Just Google it, like, just sit, type it in on YouTube, and you're like, okay, it's not the guy trying to sell houses. It's the other guy. <laughs> this guy with mustache, long hair, yeah, can't miss exactly. him. Exactly. So, yeah. that, so that's kind of, like, so that kind of, like, that YouTube space, I've seen it used by a lot of musicians before. Mm -hmm. What do you think draws people into YouTube for being an inspiring kind of musician or entertainer? Or, and, you know, it seems like an outlet. Like, people don't even have to do it just to make money or get famous, but it's, like, people... You know, with ten thousand subscribers, still really enjoy making mm. content for YouTube, or even less. You know, I've yeah. seen people make have dedicate a lot of time to YouTube and then have a thousand subscribers. Yeah. So, what about YouTube? Kind of draws you in. You know, what do, what do you think about YouTube? Draws people in. I think it's uh, it's just like a really incredible way to like to reach people that you wouldn't normally reach. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I have you know videos with like thousands of views, and I'm like, you know, I, I'm trying to like. You know, standing, trying to think of what a thousand people looks like standing on a stage. I mean, mm -mm. it's a ridiculous amount. You yeah. know, like you know, three thousand people. Like, I have no. That's like inconceivable to me as like you know physically. Right. Right. So you know, it's just like such an effective way to like promote your music if you want to do that or just like share your passion. Um, yeah, I think that's. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good point. Like for because for me. YouTube is, like, all of those conversations that I wish I could annoy people with that I can't, you know? Like, right. like no one wants to listen to me rant about Star Wars for two hours, but if I go on to YouTube, you can find content like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. There's you somebody know? who wants to <laughs> listen to you rant about Star Wars for two hours. So yeah, exactly. I listen to it. I like Star Wars. So. <laughs> yeah, so but. that's the... That's the that's the thing for me, and I think you totally hit on that. Is that YouTube is that outlet, you know, that like that communication that you can't normally have. I think with a like typical day to day mm -hmm. life, and so you know people want to hear. So like those gear reviews. What is wh what is a, a gear? What is that? Review? Uh, yeah. So so it, that can be anything. It can be a guitar. It could be okay. like a pedal, okay. like an overdrive pedal, or like a delay or reverb, or you know, you know any anything guitar related you know, okay. anything you can plug a guitar into or like use on a guitar would be like gear yeah see like so. that's that's perfect and that's exactly that outreach we're talking about it's like if you went up to your friend and told you oh don't buy that that's bad like they might not listen to you right but if you make a youtube video saying this this review and then give compelling arguments of why or why not it's good sure you'll have a few yeah you'll have some people check it out and it, yeah. it, that is like an amazing thing to me that that is like you can do that and have that outreach and so yeah really good for you for making that and uh to wrap this up coming up what's kind of the goal for you in the next year musically um and what do you what what would you like to see from yourself in the next year and, and your youtube channel as well you know what would you like to improve on what would you like to do yeah uh what I'd really, I'll, guess I'll start with the YouTube channel since we were just talking about that. Uh, I'd like to grow that. I'd like to put out more stuff. Uh, kind of had a little bit of a, a hiccup this summer. I, I uh, broke, <laughs> tore my bicep Ouch. Uh, wakeboarding. Mm -hmm. And so for a while there, you know, I was right before that, I was like practicing so much, you know, like f at least four hours a day, like really intense practice. And then like, 
after I hurt myself, I was like everything, you know, all of this pick stuff, picking stuff mm -hmm. hurt a lot. And so I, uh, I ended up, uh, just like not playing and I, it's, I'm kind of sort of picking it back up. So I'd really like to get back to like where I was, mm -hmm. uh, before my injury. Um, so that's one goal. And then of course the other goal would be just like, you know, start start learning new fun stuff get some you know find stuff that's inspiring and and fun to play and uh record it and get it out you know, <laughs> yeah get good. it out there so, so so yeah finally anything you want to promote anything you want to talk about uh before we uh leave today is there anything kind of you want to say kind of yeah. on a final note yeah sure uh mm -hmm. check out my uh my youtube it's eric post mm -hmm. uh just look for the guy with the guitar and the big hair um what's your best youtube video you think uh, I think it's, uh, I have some live covers where I play all the way through. Those are pretty good, but mm -hmm. I, the one that I like the best is the, uh, the rat round and round cover. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I try to film it a little bit as like a story where like the, I'm dr dressed up mm -hmm. and we call him Vince and he lives in the attic. And so, and then he's like living in my house and then and so a little bit of a story and he's playing nice. and he's being a nuisance. But, but I think that's, it's like not very many views on that one mm -hmm. but i think that's the best one like that's the craziest part about youtube yeah. is your favorite content can sometimes people are like eh, like i'm not gonna yeah, watch exactly. it or just doesn't it have the lucky it outreach. doesn't have the reach or something yeah, yeah. Well, okay so well hopefully go look at some it. people yeah i'm gonna check it out that's in i'm interested in that so yeah. yeah appreciate your time thank you yeah, yeah really appreciate it yeah so. thanks so much for having me Grant. yeah no problem thanks eric appreciate it It's been a few years since I've been here. I drove to my high school the other day and I was literally like, I remember when I graduated and that was like five years ago. I think in between then, it was like, whoa, 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 gone. <laughs> yeah, bye. Like, what the tonight we got Ben Lofton in the studio tonight. Um, <laughs> right now we're doing local artists. We're talking about, you know, what you guys bring to the table, uh, why Pensacola should be paid attention to. And, uh, you know, so while we're, when we're getting into it, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your role in the band and kind of what your band does around here. Absolutely. First off, thank you yeah. for having me out, man. No I definitely problem. appreciate it. Um, super cool just to walk around on campus again, be back here and see everything and kind of go through memory lane. Did you see the new building? That I have not. Dude, I saw, haven't seen it at all. It's like all glass. They built that in like, I swear, one semester. It's crazy. It was Obviously, like, the engineering building was the one that was new and polished yeah. right around the time I was here. And that had been there for like a year or so, like by the, time, by the time I got here. But it's cool, like walking up to the library. We did, my freshman year here, we did Battle of the Bands. And oh, we won sick. the Battle of the Bands nice. that year. So back in, I think, 13 or something like that. Was yeah, it still Ben Lofton and the family back then, too? Uh, technically, we were Avenue to 12. Oh, true. That was back when <laughs> I was still doing a, you know, a bunch of different things mm -hmm. with different people. And then it's kind of solidified a little bit more now with the same group of people. Right. And I've you know, obviously written a lot more music since then and you know, kind of developed a whole new sound. Yeah. But that was super cool because we had the stage set up right in front of the library. So as I'm walking here, I'm like... Walking <laughs> behind, imagining the stage, seeing Quite all set up, literally lane. like <laughs> right there. It was super cool. So that was awesome. Thank you for having me out for that. Yeah. Um, as far as like my role and everything in the band goes, definitely my favorite thing to do is you know write music mm -hmm. and then bring that to the guys and then watch it grow, watch it develop. That's the best thing about what we're doing is we're still very organic in the sense that I will start with an idea of, of lyrics or a melody or you know a rhythmic idea on top of a chord progression. Mm -hmm. And it's very simple and organically raw at that point. And then I bring it to the rest of the guys. And then you know the rhythm develops with me and Christian and Marcus. And then the, the chord structures get locked in. And then Adion comes in with a bunch of auxiliary percussion and adds right. a big you know kind of earth bound sound to yeah. it you're getting very you know coastal and latin influenced and you know different polyrhythms and things that change the way it feels as a listener i noticed that too even in like your music videos mm -hmm. uh, when you guys focus on that uh when you see the guy uh, is it bongos doing, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. his bongos okay. congas djembes like yeah. if you name it any form of hand percussion he's mm -hmm. a monster yeah, so. and it's because it's sick because and like I noticed that in your music videos too, that same feeling you're talking about is is projected in your like music videos too. Oh, yeah. So how do you guys like sit down? Do you guys like have a storyboard like when you do your music videos or like how did you guys decide that corner of the room? The room. <laughs> like, yeah, well, first off, it was a small room. 
bedroom. <laughs> Pretty much essentially just like this, yeah. uh, acoustically treated. That was where we recorded these next six songs, the two that I sent you. Mm -hmm. One of them was recorded in our house that we just finished up setting up our oh, studio nice. in. Mm -hmm. um, the first one was completely recorded in that other room. Okay. Uh, the same one that we did the acoustic video with me and Avion doing, you know, the congas and then me playing guitar. Yeah. Uh, for those last most recent acoustic, you know, music videos we put out. So that room itself was not very conducive to music videos. So <laughs> right. it was like, okay, we have room for a, one camera and we're just going to squeeze us in the corner. Yeah. And we just wanted to get these songs out and get some content going since it had been a little while, since we spent pretty much all year last year recording these six songs that we're about to release now. Right. So we were kind of pressed on a space. We actually filmed that video 2019 in like probably... April or March, oh, those two wow. videos. So it took a little while to get them out and going. Mm -hmm. But once that happened, you know, it was time to put more out. So we were finishing up the full band studio stuff. It took me a little while to find some mastering and mixing guys. Mm -hmm. That's a huge factor when you've got all the moving parts acoustically that we do. Right. Like, because the horn lines and the auxiliary percussion, the drums, you know, the bass. Mm -hmm. It's tough to get that energy, that live stage energy yeah. that we have into a recording. That right. has been a battle for the last like four years. Yeah, I saw to you. Get it. I saw you guys once. I, I remember you guys played at like intermission mm -hmm. like two years the ago. Good old days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like t totally like when you guys are watching you, uh, it's amazing. Like the, when you got the horn going and everything, it's awesome. It's like and you guys, I love that you guys play like actual original music too. Uh, oh yeah, that's huge because I feel like a lot of people here in Pensacola. And, and not to trash it because I, there is a place for it, but are mostly cover bands. Mm -hmm. And so, like, why? What's the? Why do you guys decide to kind of play your own music? Well, we still of, definitely do covers. Yeah, you know, to mm -hmm. fill up three hours worth of, of space to mm -hmm. get paid for being there, you have to play some covers and some stuff people recognize. But mm -hmm. we do a lot of kind of tweaking it right. to make the covers our own. So just like we would for writing music, I, you know, I will kind of rearrange rhythmically on a, on a or a cover song and make it more of our sound and address it with changing the rhythms to be more reggae influenced or more funk influenced mm -hmm. or folk influenced depending upon the song and how I feel like we could interpret it differently than what people are expecting. Yeah. So I do the same thing, but as far as incorporating the original music to it, that's just like goes without saying. We all enjoy playing original music more right. than we enjoy playing cover songs. Like when we play the vinyl, we might play one cover song. That's if, huge. If yeah. that because we want to use that as a showcase to put all of our stuff out and give people you know, a taste of what we enjoy writing and we enjoy coming up with as a whole. I mean, I start, all the ideas initially come to me and I bring it to the guys and if their reaction is like genuine and honest and they enjoy it, then we keep it and we roll with it. If I don't feel like I'm getting the same reaction when I'm bouncing ideas off of them, mm -hmm. I'll shelf them or you know, rework them or you know, sometimes not revisit them for a couple years. One of the songs we're going to release now was has a section in it, a verse section, that I wrote when I was 17. Oh, it's nuts. Like, in high and school. And you just sat on it. And I sat on it, dude. Does it still it was, resonate with you it, just as much? Oh, definitely. That's it crazy. Actually, it probably, when I rewrote it into this, the song that we were going to release this year, and we were recording it last year, I rewrote it into it because I needed the song to be a little longer, and I needed a little transitional section. Mm. And it just so happened to fit the chord structure perfectly as a little transitional verse section a little pre-chorus and when i when it when i tried it and it worked i was just like i fell in love with that section of the song yeah again that's so cool so that was really cool and i've started kind of trying to do that pick mm -hmm. things off the shelf a little bit right and you know throw them into something that i feel like's not finished or throwing is that something that i feel like could be spiced up more i feel like you have to have a huge catalog at this point because you've been doing it for a little bit you uh, know, or at least yeah. enough to work with right? I have if you're, a, deciding you're right though no i have a huge, i have three to four like college ruled spiral notebooks full of lyrics yeah and there's quite a few of them that i don't remember the chord structures to and that's just because I wrote them so long ago, and I like it in one ear and out the other. Right. You know, so many new ideas come to you. Um, I've been really hesitant to dive really hard into writing. I've written a handful of songs this past year that I like finished writing and really liked them, and now we're playing them. Uh, maybe like two this last year, maybe a collective like three or four in the last couple years, because wow. we've spent so much time trying to perfect these full band songs that we've been playing for the last three years or so mm -hmm. and you know have them out for people to listen to on studio 
you know, versions, right. which is so tough to cap capture the, the real energy and, like, the organic emotion mm -hmm. that, you're got, that you get from a live show and then put it into a studio sound. It's different when you're doing things with, like, MIDI and you've got drum, you know, mm -hmm. samples and pads and then keyboards and you, you know, quantize everything and it just becomes a beat almost. And right. then instead of like rapping over a beat, which is fun to do, we, mm -hmm. we all make beats and rap and, you know, goof off and stuff at the house too. Yeah. But when it comes to like sitting down and thinking, oh, I'm going to write a song now for like the full band. I'm going to write a song for seven people mm -hmm. to play together at the same time. And everyone needs the same vision. And everybody has to be on the same page mm -hmm. or it doesn't work. That vision isn't there unless everybody's seeing the same thing yeah and i have to remember that when i'm writing these so that's crazy it's I mean, tough yeah I don't, it's tough I, to write for as many people as like the full band mm -hmm. tougher to write for the full band than it is to write for me to write myself it's or, cr it's crazy to me because i can't even get my you know three to four friends to decide on lunch in the same place so i don't exactly. know how you get everyone on the same page like musically you know and so like go, going off that and you, you guys you, you play like around kind of the gulf coast area right oh, yeah we go pretty much like tallahassee through mobile okay. on a pretty regular basis oh, that's so sick. a lot of things over at, uh, mm -hmm. like fsu and then panama city um, Destin, Fort Walton Beach, Grayton Beach, uh, here, oh, and then over in Mobile. Those are like our main areas. So, what's some of the best, like, live performances you had, or memories you had from that? And what's some kind of, like, the worst or hardest, you know? Like, what, what is kind of the yin and the yang of these live shows? Oh, man, sometimes the worst is everybody who didn't show up at, on time, and then we're <laughs> running late, and there's, you know, 15 to 20 minutes to set everything up, and people are just now showing up. So, we set everything up in a freaking flash <laughs> and then we're stressing i'm soaked in sweat because it's the middle of the summer yeah. or you know something along those lines and then we didn't get a chance to sound check so then it's like oh my god we're trying to make sure that all second like middle school tune up like, dude it's quick. literally like the middle school <laughs> tune up we're in the middle of the first song retuning the guitars you know, the, so the horns are over, like, not facing the microphones, hitting, like, burr, 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 <laughs> like, tuning their, like, you know, horns fine. together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, you know, drummers just laying out a groove, like, just keeping people moving, so, right. I mean, and those are typically... You're like, drink more, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give us another 30 minutes, please. <laughs> so, and that's more so when you're doing the bar gigs and things like that. Oh, man, I'll tell you one crazy story. We showed up to Tallahassee one time. Uh, to play a big sorority formal event at, uh, where was it, Recess? Um, no, one of the hotels, one mm -hmm. of the big hotels up there that everybody goes and does these big formal events at. They set us up a monster stage, and it was packed. Everybody's all decked out in suits and gowns and stuff. They were all dressed up. Mm -hmm. And we show up already late, had a flat tire <laughs> in the trailer <laughs> on the, in the van on the way over there, get there load everything in everything's up in the room three stories up in this hotel like on the lobby area that we're playing and we get in we're setting stuff up and we realize we didn't bring a soundboard um, how do you even manage without a soundboard you don't that's yeah. the thing. so essentially we fortunately we had some friends in tallahassee and we called up one of our buddies uh demetrius and was like man we're like screwed yeah. we please do you have a soundboard or you know something and he had a little four channel <laughs> mind you this is still six of us playing right four channel little soundboard so we had four inputs so, so i just like turned my am something. amplifier up really loud <laughs> we turned the bass amp up really loud mm -hmm. and we just had my vocals the, the saxophone had a microphone the trombone had a microphone and then i think Avion had a vocal mic, so he had just basically one microphone for his voice, and then he had to like angle it down in, when he wasn't singing <laughs> to on the congas. So we're, it was four, and then it was, it was just rough. It and was really it, rough. It, we it, made it work. We're just going to blast we it. We made it work. <laughs> we started an hour and like 10 minutes late, but we still made it work, and we played like 30 minutes to an hour later than we were supposed to mm -hmm. because we started late. We felt bad, and these kids were all like super stoked that we were there because of bunch of them were our friends from Pensacola that had gone to FSU. Oh, cool. And this was like one of, this probably two, three years ago. So it was kind of one of our first or second big gigs over in Tallahassee. And we were, you know, wanting to make sure that, you know, people like us yeah. over there. You know, all yeah. the kids want to come back. There. Yeah, we yeah. want to come back and play for all these beautiful women at FSU. <laughs> yeah, like, of course. Of course we do. <laughs> so we felt just totally retarded. I, mean, I shouldn't even say that word. I'm sorry. But... Just, we were idiots, because we are like, how do you show up 
after a flat tire with no soundboard. Yeah, it was, just, it was horrible. It was horrible. But you guys managed to We do made it through it, it yeah. and the crowd loved it. I mean, it turned, ended up we had the power short on us twice. Isn't that the funny thing? In the thing? same night. So then, like, we're cu- power's cutting in and out. It was really hilarious, yeah. honestly. And you're like halfway through like, your song. All you can do is laugh. Yeah. Because everything has already gone wrong so much that night that we're like, oh my goodness gracious. So, like, the power cuts out. And what do we do? Drummer keeps going, congas keep going. The conga player picks up, jumps into the crowd, hands somebody a conga drum and a bongo, and then the saxophone player runs into the crowd, and then they're just like dancing and partying in the crowd. Right? Nobody had. It. I mean, oh, someone maybe was recording. That. I'll I'll reach out and see if anybody yeah. has any pictures. Of it. I would love to clip. If, if we could clip that right over this, that would be perfect. You know, we did the same thing at one of FSU's events. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was actually an off-campus event, so I'm like. <laughs> I don't know if they were supposed to be doing it, but it was the Fratellina wine mixer. Oh, nice. And it Perfect was, name. Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> so it was a blast. Everybody that was legal age to drink wine was drinking yeah, wine, of lots of wine. <laughs> and um, so were we. So the same thing, we had an extension cord run from the, ran from the house, and it goes all the way to this tent, probably 100 yards, maybe 50 yards away from the house. And power shorted, same thing. We just jumped off the stage. Everybody starts. I grabbed a tambourine and hit the crowd. The drums got disassembled and then went into the crowd. You know, everybody's holding on to a different thing. The saxophone is running through the crowd right. playing, you know, what was he playing? Gucci Gang. It was and literally was running the melody of Gucci going. Gang nonstop. <laughs> and, we're, and the whole place is just jumping. It, I mean, the power had been cut out, so it's yeah. black pitch black in this tent. The coolest part is that it's like the only thing you can get with music. Like, you know, it's like that, that, you can only cause that kind of like, it's like havoc. craziness. It's craziness and havoc yeah, and yeah. wild and it's so much fun and that's one of the things that I love about it. And those are the moments when it's like, oh, this sucks. Like, this would be a nightmare normally. But yeah. in that moment, you're like, oh, what do you do? Stop playing and then kill the vibe or keep the drums going. Yeah, exactly. And since you guys you guys aren't given a speech, you guys are given We're given entertainment. Yeah. We gotta make sure people are happy. Yeah. So yeah. it's like let's yeah. keep it going, man. <laughs> let's let's party a little bit. <laughs> All you need is that little bit of groove and then everybody's gonna jump on board and keep dancing and keep right. partying and keep having a good time. Even if you know nobody hears any vocals, mm-hmm. or if nobody you know hears any guitars or bass, because all the electronics are off, you just give them a rhythm, mm-hmm. and then the saxophone comes over the melody, or the horn comes over the melody. Really, we that's where we like channel that New Orleans second line groove, right? Because you go through New Orleans in the middle of the street, people are walking block to block to block with nothing but horns yeah, and, and drums, little kids on drums. Exactly, and that's it. Second line grooves, and it's so much fun. I love second line grooves. I go to Jazz Fest just to go follow the Indians around the <laughs> campground at Jazz Fest and just dance the whole time. It's just a good time. So, so that's kind of where we stole the whole, like, in the worst of moments, yeah. the worst times, keeping things going and turning it into something funny and fun no matter what happens. Some of the best times we've ever had Man, this last time we did, um, last year, September, a few months ago, we did Seafood Fest okay. over downtown Pensacola, mm-hmm. and the crowd was packed. It was hundreds and hundreds of people in front of us, and we had an hour and a half to play. Is that Two the same bands. as the Crawfish Festival? Or Not the Crawfish. Okay. Crawfish was at was behind the ballpark. Okay. This one was the one that was actually at the, uh, like... The park that's kind of by Fish House mm-hmm. and um, Seville Square, okay. essentially. So they had the big stage set up, tons of lights, all that fun stuff. And we played probably 80% original music, some stuff that we don't even really play on a regular basis, just kind of like new ideas. Right. I played a song that I had written a month prior, showed the band the song three days before the show. And it was like, And it worked. Nice. It just worked. I messed up the lyrics probably four <laughs> or five times throughout the song, but nobody knew because it was a brand new song yeah, nobody had ever heard. heard. So I just ad lipped it, and then you know it still was fine. Nobody knew anything was wrong, as long as I don't act like I, you know, oh I messed that up. Let me restart, guys. As long as I don't do that and I just sing through it, people are like, okay, that's cool. I like it. Yeah. So especially since it's something nobody ever heard of before, and we're releasing that one. The guys really love that one, so we're gonna release that one um, this year as well. But that show was probably one of my favorites to date. Cool. This, uh, the Seafood Fest was just such an awesome crowd energy. By the end of the show, we had probably three or 400 people like pressed up in front of us at the stage. Right. And you know, just our energy was their energy, and their energy was mm-hmm. our energy. By the end of it, we're all drenched in sweat, and the lights are beaming down on us. It was just awesome. Yeah, it was just it's one like of those moments. Perfect show. Yeah. 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 One of those, that was probably the, per- the most perfect show of 
of 2019. That nice. or the one we did with Zach Deputy at the Vinyl. Those oh, okay. were two really good shows, too. Yeah, the, ever since the Vinyl's been kind of reamped, it's, like, pretty it sick. Is. It's, yeah. I love what they're doing now with the late-night laser things, mm -hmm. too. Have you seen? I think they did, like, a, uh, they called it an emo party. And it was, like, <laughs> early 2000s, like, rock music. Nice. Or, like, you know, not heavy metal, but kind of that same stuff we all grew up with in middle school listening to mm -hmm. and you know like this fall is, out boy this angst idea. yeah the angst yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah. as as we're wrapping up uh anything you want to plug anything you want to end with anything you kind of want to promote at the end of this um this is your time to say it as we kind of wrap up with this one um not specifically um be on the lookout for a bunch of new music this year okay. this year the whole goal is release studio music and give people more stuff to listen to mm -hmm. the stuff that we have out right now has been out for over a year now and it was experimental you know the way we recorded it was a little different than what we did did now right and the stuff we're doing now the stuff i sent you earlier yeah. is just i love it so much more i'm super excited about getting it out so once Thanks. these get out you know just Listen to music, enjoy it, come hang out with us. When's so, the next show? When like when is the next show in town? The when next do people see you? big one. I don't know if I'm even supposed to talk about. Oh, okay. Then we'll, let's we'll go we'll, with, <laughs> exclusive like Argo Life. Nah, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I got, I got just got confirmation we're doing Crawfish Fest and Seafood Fest again this okay. year. So that'll be cool. But that's not Crawfish Fest isn't until May. So the next one that we have in town that's looking like a big event is probably going to be the Crawfish Fest okay. in in May. Yeah. That um and then shortly after like the summer we got some cool festival things that are happening out at the Pensacola Beach that oh, they're going to host. Sick. And they got us to be a part of some of that. Blue Angel weekend is going to be a massive weekend. Okay. Um so summer is going to go you're Summer gonna go is when it's in. really going to kick off mm -hmm. for sure. We've got stuff out of town consistently starting in February and March. But as far as in Pensacola goes, it's looking like mostly, you know, probably from May through August, September, we're going to have a pretty packed schedule where you'll be able to find us downtown, beach, okay. somewhere around there. And we'll post a lot of them on, you know, You guys got to come back to intermission medias. because that dingy bar Dude, is... Everybody, everybody <laughs> asks us. No, no BS. Everybody <laughs> asks us. When are you coming back to intermission? <laughs> and out of all the places we play... Uh -huh. That's the one where people are like, dude, I saw you at the Mish. Yeah. I remember now. And it's out of, let me shoot, dude. We've played in front of so many people at so many different venues. But intermission. But that's the one people ring up. Yeah. It's so funny. And I guess it's because that's the spot. You know, everybody yeah. runs through intermission at least once downtown. Yeah, exactly. And when there's a band shoved in the corner and we're yeah. five and everybody walks in and we're like, well, you're right. You yeah. can't miss us. You can right dance there. in front of your... Literally, I have people dress. come get on stage and me. Like, old women will come grab my butt while I'm singing on stage because it's like the yeah. foot of space between me and them. Yeah, exactly. People spill their drinks all over us. It's We don't play our nice equipment at that. Right? Yeah. Well, no. um, <laughs> well, thank you for coming in. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll keep you, we'll uh, keep everyone posted on your next uh, Yes, next time please do. I'll make sure and let you know. Listen to some music. Ben off into the family on you know, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. Cool. All that fun stuff. So, and you know, be on the lookout for some cool, some, some cool videos and some cool things coming out. We got to fight the list. That we're gonna drop this year. Well, dude, thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Yes. Thank you. Thank you to Ben Lofton of Ben Lofton and the Family. So glad to have you on the show. Coming up next is what? Tonight we got After Party with us. Um, this is our last interview for our first episode of Argo Life. Um, tell us a little about what you guys do for After Party, um, kind of like what your kind of sound is, and where you're going, you know. Okay, so I mean, pretty much it's me and my uh, me and my good friend Gordon, you know, um, we call him Gordy. Uh, so he, he's been our friend since forever, you know, um, since middle school really, since sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And we, we've known each other, he's, I always knew he sang, you know, and I've always right. kind of wanted to be a DJ. So I really started kind of dabbling in music by trying to produce EDM, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and that's how I got into production, you know. Um, from there I actually started making beats and I started kind of rapping on them as well. And then, you know, eventually we just had the idea to kind of make it work like right. him sing with him singing being more melodic and you know i mean being more rhythmic and stuff with everything oh um, cool yeah i mean that's that, that was just kind of the idea mm -hmm. for it but as far as what we're doing now we're still just doing the same thing you know we're just going in there and you know making music yeah i i heard 
you guys just recently came out with a song, Pop, right? Yeah. And I listened to that, and it seems like you guys, maybe not, like, completely changing your sound, but it's definitely, like, evolving. Like, I, I felt like Pop was definitely one of your stronger singles you've come out with recently. True. Um, it I gave you kind of kind of Blue Rain vibes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, but, like, just with that, like, you know, like, that course that hits you in the face. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, it's something that you can vibe to. Yeah, So like, that. Yeah, no problem. And so... Kind of like, is that kind of the direction you guys are still going? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, cool. For cool. sure, for sure. Like, that was like, I don't know, we just decided we can't really, we, we can do whatever we want, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we can make whatever kind of music we want. We can do slow stuff. We can do fast stuff. And that's not, you know, tooting my own horn or anything, but it's just because we've, we've done it, you know? Right. But uh, I think that's kind of like the sound that we're, we're finding, which is a piece of everything that we've done before. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what we're finding now that's coming together and, you know, making something... That's that's us. Right. Yeah, that's our sound. So yeah. Yeah. So like, how did you guys land on your sound? Right. Like, what made you? What kind of? Who inspires you? You know, what made you kind of pick mm -hmm. that specific sound? So when we first started making music, we were heavily inspired by um, I don't know if you heard of him, but Roy Woods mm -hmm. and The Weeknd. Yeah. Uh, I know you heard of The Weeknd. Yeah. I mean, Everybody Roy Woods is fantastic. Yeah. And when you when you guys first started making music, The Weeknd was like. He just came out with, like, Glass Tables mm -hmm. and, like, that kind of music where he was, like, kind of dingy still. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, like, we kind of liked the fact that it was, like, it was kind of like party music in a way, but it was also sad and about something, you yeah. know? And that's kind of, like, what... You can do like both. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's kind of, like, that's kind of, like, the vibe that we stay on because, really, that's, it's, it's in the name, you know? It's not it's not the party. It's after the party. Right. You know, it yeah. could be an after party or it, could be, or it could be sad. So I sad only boy, have I half... <laughs> <laughs> So I only have half of after party here right now. So are you more of the after or more of the party? Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I think me and Gordon have, have collectively <laughs> agreed that I'm the I'm the party. Okay. But it's just because of the way it is. He just mm -hmm. wanted to be first. That's right. the way he looks at it. Yeah, so I after. totally understand. Yeah. yeah. Even though the words after, but. <laughs> I, guess I, would say. I was listening. I was listening to you guys. Um, you guys went on a radio show, right? Mm -hmm. And they they asked you if you would your music for the after party. Mm -hmm. So I like to take that question. I kind of want to change it up. If you had to have an after party, who? What three people would you have there, and why? Famous people. Yeah. Uh, what? I would have. Don't look at me, dude. My uh, answer. <laughs> I would have, um, like, anybody? Yeah. Anybody. Anybody. They could be dead. Could be a, a dead president. I don't even know. Okay, I would have, honestly, I would just have Drake there. Yeah, obviously. Dude, girls love Drake. Yes, if you have Drake at your party, it's going to be a good It's going to be, there you go. <laughs> Drake, uh, Travis Scott. Thank God. Travis Scott would be huge. And... You should get some random. It was your cat. <laughs> Doja Cat? Yeah. Okay, that's a, I, you know, I didn't expect that one, but I feel like that would bring that energy. Mm -hmm. and would you ask him to play, or just like, just, vibe. just chilling? Just yeah. vibe. Mohammed, what about you? Uh, well, wait, so I was having... Was You're having three, anyone. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. Travis Scott. Mm -hmm. He said Doja Cat, that's a, that's a good one, but I would uh, say Janae Aiko. Okay. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> You're just trying to slide. <laughs> 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 You're not wrong. <laughs> but uh third person possibly um I think Playboy Cardi would be sick. True. Yeah, that would be i the party it would not be the after party anymore yeah, if you had Playboy Cardi. It would just, be, it would just be, be the party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. So what's going on in the future for after party? Where are you guys looking to go? Um what's kinda So actually uh pretty much Gordon we we recently kinda got out of a, a situation where we were signed to a, a record company and everything like that. Right. And, you know, they were doing stuff that was good for us at first. Mm -hmm. You know, we went on trips, um, recorded with different people, shot a few music videos, we didn't pay for any of it. It was all the record label um, doing it. But we kind of had to get out of that, you know, mm -hmm. um, in the in the middle of it because they stopped answering our phone calls. They stopped doing, you know, what we were so asking shady. them to do. They were, they were just pretty much doing what they thought was going to work right. with, like, what we, what we were putting out. And I mean, we, we know what's going to work with our stuff. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they should have just listened to us more, I think. But 
yeah, so we had to kind of separate ourselves from that situation, but now we're, we're you know, we're, all, we're doing our own thing. We're still making music with Boney. Yeah. Shout out to Boney. Uh, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, He's like, he goes hard, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. so crazy. He's yeah. Good. But, um, yeah, we're actually about to go over there after this right yeah. now. Oh, so. But um, Go- Gordon is in film school right now in Orlando. Okay. He's going to be there for a year. Mm-hmm. I graduate in a year. Nice. So, you know, after that, you know, he's going to be a film expert. Yeah. We're just going to make it work, man. So We're going to start shots. pumping out content. Yeah. yeah. The, the music video is yeah. going to be top notch, dude. Mm-hmm. That's what I expect. You guys already, I noticed, you guys already have pretty slick editing uh, for kind of like, you know, you how you guys are right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but your editing's already like top tier. Like it's already like pretty fun to look yeah, at. Yeah, I mean, we have like a we have like a, a thing, bro. It's like if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right, you know. Right. So, I mean, everything that we put out is just know that it's literally what we thought it could have been the, the best at the time. Mm-hmm. Obviously, over time, it progresses and we see that progression, but... You know, the first thing we put out, we thought it was the best thing ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? The next thing we put out, we're going to think is the best thing ever. Right. So You're not going to put out something you don't, like, think is mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And that's just kind of how you got to stay excited about it, too. Mm-hmm. You know, but. I see a lot of musicians, like, everyone I've talked to is, always, like, to, about this podcast is always on the same page with that. Like, mm-hmm. ev- no one wants to put out something that's half-baked, you know? And so that's super cool that you guys are, like, putting out stuff and putting that effort into it. Yeah. And so with all this effort, like, what's kind of the best? You, you guys have, have played live before right Mm -hmm. yeah and so what's some of the best live show experiences you've had and what's some of the worst like what's the what's the Uh, yin and the yang of the live (laughs) show (laughs) so uh (laughs) so the best one the best one was probably our our last show at the vinyl which was sick because we we did it with our 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 boy smiles which is really pursuing the music thing right now in atlanta and he's killing it yeah which is which is dope um shout out to smiles by the way (laughs) and um so yeah pretty much we, we we threw a show with him just put it, put it out, promoted it for about three months, you know, mm-hmm. and, and we actually like, you know, obviously you have to invest to, to have a show like that. So we made our investment back and we were pretty satisfied with that. Where'd you guys play? Honestly, and it was a great vibe. Yeah, yeah. Above all. Was it like just sold out practically or just like huge crowd? I mean, I'm not going to cap and say it was sold out. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it was, it was, it was big. It was yeah. the biggest one we've had uh, for sure. True. Mom. Well, not the biggest one we've had. We pr- Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the one. That's the <laughs> one. So, um. We performed at this thing for like this. That, this isn't the best one, but it was just the biggest. Mm-hmm. Uh, we performed at this thing for school when we were in high school. Um, <laughs> they paid us like a hundred bucks, and it was like this. Uh, in this high school, S- you're like, oh, it was my this, God, it was this SGA bucks. state event that was yeah. being held in Pensacola, and so like it was like a thousand kids in the <laughs> gym at West Florida, bro. Oh, and just seventeen year olds. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we're just, and we're just up there. I mean, I'm, I was eighteen. Yeah. I, was a, I was a senior at this point. Yeah. So we just what? went up there. Couldn't couldn't cuss at all. We didn't take it out of our songs though. I mean, they just played. Nobody nobody really paid attention. That's sick. But we just weren't about to say some I don't know some corny or just be like mute ourselves like nah. Yeah. But uh, that was that was cool though. Um, Except I saw one kid like all the way in the back. Cause he, he was over there. He was like, just frowning. <laughs> <laughs> this is the devil's music. No, but yeah, it was the reason it wasn't the best though. It was just because uh, my microphone was having problems. Like it was delayed because mm-hmm. they were Bluetooth mics. So it was, it was just. So you're trying to sing and it's just like. It was like off. T- it was like off time. So yeah. I was just like, dude, like I can't do this anymore. But. Yeah, that was the the best was that vinyl though. The vibe oh was great. God. You know, everybody had a good time. That was amazing, and but. people made money. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, mm-hmm. all right. After party shows are the best. Not only are the performers are sick, mm-hmm. the music is good. I'm on stage. You're gonna get wet. You're gonna catch some money because I always shoot money into the crowd. This is why, true. Why is that? Why? What's what made you? It's just the thing, dude. We started. We started. We started. We, ever since like the first show, bro, we would throw out like dollar bills. I would say send nudes on them. Yeah. <laughs> have, a, have a little. Have a little app on the side. Yeah. So, so you could theoretically go to an after party show and make your money back. Yeah. Theoretically. Yeah. yeah, if you get lucky. Yeah, the first show, I threw 200. Yeah. second show, oh, yeah, I, I threw about five. No way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's it, just... It's, it brings people back. and make, It's fun. Like, who doesn't mm-hmm. want free money, good live While music. you're playing... Yeah, yeah exactly. Sick. While you're dancing, dude. Yeah, you get to like, make money what? for dancing. <laughs> I think that's probably the... I, I wish I could make money for dancing. <laughs> I need that. But but the, re- the reason we really did it, though, is because, like, on our first show ever, it was just, like, we were, like, featuring on, on uh, our friend Izzy's... Mm-hmm. Uh, like set and he used to make music he's kind of like one of the people that inspired me to start even start right. like, rapping you know because oh, he did sick. it and he went to West Florida too you and know? he's kind of a local yeah he went yeah he went mm-hmm. to he went to high school with us so, uh, yeah, him and Rodney both um so like they were recording stuff you know so he was he had a show I was like dude you gotta let us have a show man like people were liking our music and we were in, yeah and we were at, and we were in high school and we went to the handlebar and <laughs> it was kind of like a showcase thing so he was just one of the artists yeah. and we were sharing two slots with him mm-hmm. of a song that we had with him it was it was a good time but 
one of the acts just had like this I'm just gonna put like an out of place stripper there, and mm-hmm. it was just like being money being thrown everywhere. And we we're like, dude, we should throw money at yeah. the It's just like a light bulb. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because people got hyped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People got hyped. Like, a, oh, wait, there's money. When she popped up, people weren't really like, you know. But then like the money started going everywhere. Was like, like, ah. <laughs> and then I was like, genius. It was just per- pure bliss. And then yeah, you've man. done it ever since. Have you guys done that every live show? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so sick. That's so funny. I'm coming to the next live show. Let me show you. <laughs> What's what is? Do you guys have any live shows planned, or are you guys trying? Right to now, bro. Honestly, no, we don't. Mm-hmm. We're just kind of like really sticking to making the music mm-hmm. and making it the best it can be. Because we're trying to the next show we have, we're trying to have people, you know, singing to the stuff that we like. Yeah. So, like you know what I mean? We like listening to. We like yeah. um, hearing. Like not like we don't like our old stuff. You know, it's always good to listen to. But you know, we definitely prefer the stuff that we have in the making right now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, like I said, touching back on earlier, the evolution. You know, and mm-hmm. so. What's type? What's kind of in the way you want to evolve? What's kind of the biggest thing you want to focus on in twenty twenty? So I want to hone in on uh, just really making a a sound that's distinct, wh- whether it be the, in the production, you know, or the, mm-hmm. the cadence, or you know, just even our, our the tones of our, our our voice. I think Gordon already ha- has had a pretty distinct voice since he started. Mm-hmm. Um, and he finally just got like you know like the cadence down and everything like that. He's killing it. Yeah, no, and, and for and for me, I think I'm finally starting to get the tone of my voice down right. to where I want to have it. You know, um, to where it's like <clears throat> you you'll, you'll hear it and you'll know it's me, type of deal. Yeah. You know, um, and that's I think that's really important. You know, having you know your own voice, mm-hmm. and I think it's something that every artist, even the ones that are on top now, have to go through. You know, you listen to an old Gunna song, it doesn't totally, sound like Gunna. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like. They, 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 they try to, you, you take and grab things from the people you listen to the most mm-hmm. until eventually you find a way to bring those things together to make it sound like you. You can fo- foster your own mm-hmm. sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like nothing can do that other than time and practice and right. working on it. Yeah. Which, exactly. is, which is great, you know, that's, that's what I like. So what's your favorite song you guys have made so far? Um, what's like, what's the honestly, song like, oh, it's, yeah, like, honestly the it's, it's the song that we, we, we just dropped after Pop. Okay. Like like recently, recently. Okay. I don't think I've heard yeah. that one yet. Yeah, it's called it's called Hard Arrest. That mm-hmm. one's that one's good. Did you? And s- all you should send that to me. I'll I'll put it in the I'll put it in the. I'll send it to you. I'll send cool. it to you for sure. And so yeah, now wrapping up. What's kind of what's what's something you want to plug? What's something to look on the horizon? What's some something people should t- pay attention to coming for after party. Well, we just dropped two songs that were pretty dope. One of them's more of a chill vibe, you know, a little bit more relaxed. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one is. Also chill, but it's a little bit bouncier. That's that's harder. That's the one I was telling you about. Yeah. Um, but they're both really cool. Y'all should go check them out. One of them's called Right Here. The other one's called Heart Arrest. You can find them all under X After Party X on anything. All right. Cool. Mohammed, you got anything to say? Any last words? All right. Well, I appreciate oh, you get- I keep an eye out for Lil Root. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lil Root. Yeah. Some coming up. Yeah. All right. Good to know. It'll happen. Okay. Lil Root. Short for Lil Root. Yeah. Twitter is well. Okay. There you go. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys for coming on. Uh, definitely looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys do. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Cool. Appreciate it, guys. Oh. <laughs>